Good day, everybody. It's Jerry from Backcountry Ranch. Welcome to another video. Today's video, we got some things we're going to take care of, some small things to do in the Jeep. Since I did the 8.8 .8 swap quite a while ago, and the Jeep had been sitting because we tore out the front axle, rebuilt the front axle, trust it, everything else. I need to change the oil in the rear differential. I got about uh, probably pretty close, around 1,000 kilometers on it so far, so I need to change it. And a little while ago, when I was at Princess Auto, I picked up a couple new jack stands because I'd just been using the small automotive ones in the garage. And I figured these ones were on sale. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to upgrade and get some larger jacks because all my vehicles are lifted. And I've been putting these small automotive jacks on blocks and stuff, but it's time to move up. They've just been floating in the back of the TJ until I had a chance to get them out of the box. So what we're looking at right here is I picked up the big red. 12 ton lifting range 17 and 5 16 inch up to 27 and 15 16 so over two feet foldable and i also picked up these were on sale little four ton seven and a half to 14 and 5 16 two of them both going to be in each jeeps these are going to be safe for a later date because i got to build some jigs for them and I'm gonna carry them inside the Jeep instead of using a high lift jack to jack up the axles. I had one in my F-150 and I also carried one in here in the early days, but I sold that jack with the F-150, so I got two more for this. So let's get these jacks assembled. Well, the good news is the jacks are beefier than what I thought. The bad news is I thought they came as a pair, but they only come in singles. That is beefy. It's a good thing Princess Auto still has four left in the South Calgary. So I gotta make some errands tonight. I'll go down there and pick them up. So when I first filled this, I believe I put in three and a half liters. So I'm gonna pull the cover off. I'm actually gonna pull the this fill out. See if there is oil above that fill. It's going to be <clears throat> a little over half the axle, but the pinion is at a steep angle, so that's why I overfilled it. And then I got to fix my brakes. I realized that my um, my little caliper guides there somehow worked them, working their way out. I got to take care of that. Having the proper oil level is a tricky situation because if you have too little or too much, you're either going to starve it of oil or you're going to aerate it and it's going to make a mess so we're going to see if there's going to be any oil coming out of here no there isn't take a zip tie oh uh, yeah so probably Yeah, that was probably right about there. Let all the magic out. Got my lube locker in there. I left this middle one loose, so the cover's just not gonna fall off. All right. Stuck. You get like a little rubber mallet. And to see if my little toy hammer will let the sadness out. There we go. Yeah. Just come right out, just like that. <clears throat> if it's one thing that I dislike. That is the smell of gear oil. Gear oil is so rancid, especially if it's like burnt gear oil. You see that? That's what I'm talking about. Detroit True Track. Best thing since sliced bread. We got the lube locker. It's awesome. Just checking the gear pattern. Everything's looking really good. Coast to drive side of the gear is worn nicely. Looking very, very spiffy. I don't see anything 
I should be concerned about. Oh, well, it looks pretty good. It's your typical gear oil. You're always going to have some sort of metal filings in there. I'm running Amsoil 7590. When Amsoil moved to these bags, this is the best thing since sliced bread, especially when it comes to filling differentials. It makes it so much easier. And I just squeeze the bag, squeeze it all in. Three and a half liters is what we're going to do. Get in there, get in there. Reach up in there. I had it down on strength number one for putting lug nuts on the tires. I should have checked beforehand. It was a feel. Now it should just rip it out. Oops. If I can get on there. Then this bottom one is 17 mil as well. I just gotta size them up. And actually the rubber is pretty good. In these links it's like mint still so I do have to cut it down a little bit so I just want to mark that so I can have a look perfect so this is the part if you screw it up there's no going back So I got a belt sander here, I'm just going to taper it. Perfect. I just thread this up to size. Both sway bar links are set up. Unfortunately, there is one big issue. And you're gonna see right here is that the factory bolts are too small for the opening in there. So we're gonna have to make a insert because those are too big to get inside there. But I do have a piece of aluminum And I haven't used a lathe in a very long time. So in the morning when it's cooler, we're going to do some machining. But in the meantime, I'm going to pull that rear tire off and see what's going on with the brakes. see right there I don't even know how that even happens doesn't matter we're gonna take it apart rectify the situation jammed in there all of a sudden probably gonna come out to the bottom that's why so put them back on to make sure the indentation is in and then I'm gonna repunch it on this side because it flattened out when it moved. And I'm gonna use this little toy brass hammer here and make that happen. So 
So I just put a good indentation on both sides and that should cure that issue with this drifting. Hopefully now no more issues with those slides coming out. I'll machine the part tomorrow. I'm gonna get something to eat, shower, head out, see if I can get another jack, and a GPS from Cabela's that's on sale. The following morning, back in the garage, picked up another jack. Of course, those 12 ton jacks, a little bit overkill, but if I need them on the frame to support the frame, I won't have to use dunnage or anything. I need to start machining my pieces, and I need that special drill bit right there to make it happen. So, basically, how that works is in the lathe, if I try to use a regular drill bit. There's a good chance it will deflect and it won't be perfectly centered. So this way, that little short stub won't deflect. So I got a 13, 36 drill bit. I'm gonna drill, and that'll be the pilot hole for that bolt. All right, now he's gonna run this little one eighth drill bit through. That way, when I step drill it, it's gonna make it easier. Once you got your pilot hole, it makes drilling with a larger drill bit way easier. Got the live center put in. Now I gotta start machining it down. Nice and polished. With these little hobby mills, it's hard to take large cuts. So I just take bits and keep spraying the carbide down. That should be the size I need. That's perfect. Just got to machine that other end and then cut her to size. At least this won't take as long. Got one in. And we're looking mint. Yeah, just using the vise, press them in. Well, that was an hour and a half of my time wasted. I should send JKS an invoice for $250 for my time to make these work. I think I should start doing that. Invoicing companies for making products that don't fit properly. takes care of that sadly 
Nothing can ever go smooth. You always got to modify everything because companies can't seem to make shit that works. Well, hello there. I'm just out for a quick rip in the Jeep, make sure everything's good because I want to head out for a day trip pretty soon. And last thing I want to do is go out on a day trip and find some issues. So I just came out in the evening right now. Quick solo trip by myself. Nothing serious at all. Just kind of testing the waters. I really like the comfort level of the Jeep now. The suspension is firm but it's not shaking you around everything seems to cushion really well what i've driven so far i'm very impressed nothing like the sound of a v8 just idling All right, do you know what time it is? It's motherfucking beer time, that's what time it is. We got this round trip amber ale that I picked up last weekend. And I'm pretty happy with the way the Jeep turned out. The suspension is firm, does not bounce around, and it feels good when I'm out in the trails. Johnny joins in and pop out. So that means when I had them apart, because I didn't compress them, Snap rings didn't go on properly, and that's why they popped. Operator error. Lesson learned. Anyways, cheers, motherfucker. Wait, whoa. <laughs> Fucking lost my line there. It's motherfucking beer time. Cheers, everybody. Feels so good to have the TJ out. You have no idea after all this time how good it feels. Anyways. Off to the next project. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. I'll see you guys in the next one.